Hello and welcome to the first uh, free <laughs> online webinar in 2018 with uh, Dr. Luis Besser from Porto. My name is Holger Kast and uh, I'm leading through this webinar and uh, I'm the Global Training Education Manager for Tree Dental Implants and I'm really proud and happy to um, this nice uh, hot topic, the socket shield technique road to success with uh, Luis Besser. Um, I think uh, we will see a lot of uh, uh, amazing cases and um, but before I pass the word to Luis, I would like to quickly take the chance and introduce you in our beautiful uh, TRI um, implant system. So I would like to show you here quickly the philosophy of uh, the TRI system. You see here on the left side down that we are 100% Swiss made implant system. So all our products um, are produced and built in Switzerland, um, uh, which uh, explains the high quality aspect of the system. Um, then all the developing and all the products we have in our portfolio, we um, 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 work out after the newest gold standards in the industry in the dentistry and so we have this so-called performance concept which you are always able to um, uh, see in our website and uh, get more explanation about our tree performance concept which for example implements the so-called soft tissue concept and narrow emergence profile around the bone level um, to to give more space for the gingiva to protect the bone surrounding the implant and uh, actually we get more and more copied uh, with this um, a great feature of our system then a uh, big big feature of the system is the simplicity the simplicity is uh, actually in the uh, daily business, in the workflow. We have one surgical kit for three different implant lines, a bone level system, a tissue level system, and a narrow system. And all this we have with uh, less components than uh, other companies uh, offer you, but you are able to um, do, uh, have uh, abutments and prosthetic parts for single crowns up to edentulous and all on four, all on TRI uh, techniques and also a lot of uh, new uh, digital products. So the fair price is also important. We we offer you uh, the whole high quality system for a really fair price. Worldwide we are in 40 uh, different countries and uh, the last point here is maybe uh, something I want to focus the next few minutes, the think digital. So the digital is uh, for sure the future of dentistry and of implantology and therefore we've put a lot of effort the last year uh, in 2016 17 to develop the newest and uh, even some patented uh, products to uh, be able to use the whole digital workflow from the scanning of the data uh, up to uh, nice prosthetic <clears throat> products uh, which I tried to explain you quickly. Um, so we have uh, the milling blanks for all our implant types for the tissue and bone level implants which implement also the uh, so-called tree friction connection to have a safe connection between implant and uh, abutment and also it implements the soft tissue concept which I explained to you before. And then there is a multi-unit uh, tie base, which we actually developed with uh, Luis Besser together. And uh, we put a lot of ideas in it, which uh, uh, you never um, maybe saw before, um, because uh, it, we, we, we are cuttable with this uh, product and it's implemented in the digital uh, data of your uh, three uh, of your CAD CAM software. Then we uh, new have a digital model analog, which is maybe a very important tool to be able to do 3D printed uh, models of your mouth situation. And then you need special digital analogs to uh, have the position of the implant uh, of the implant on your model and uh, also we have uh, a new in our portfolio uh, angulated screwdriver which allows you uh, angulation of your um, screw channel up to 20 degrees and also the most important thing to have a digital solution uh, is the scan body so we offer scan bodies for all our implant types also for our multi-unit line for the um, apartment level scanning either in the mouth or uh, extra oral 
on the um, model. And um, the um, um, nice uh, thing here, uh, what I want to explain you is the patented TRI base. So it's a, actually a, a bonding base. It, um, we call it the tree base, the tri base. And um, we are the first, actually the first um, company in the world who offers you a customizable tie base in angulation and also in height, which gives you more safety for fixing and for, for a, a stable uh, a tie base. Uh, cemented on a crown or even up to full arch bridges because we, deal, we we offer you this product in engaging and non-engaging so with an hexagon and without um, very interesting is that we implement and you can see this on this picture it's a slightly rough macro structure on the surface which gives you the best fitting connection between cement and uh, prosthetic and so this uh, gives you a safety that the cement will always uh, um, fixed or the, the the bonding is always fixed between abutment and, and prosthetic. And then, um, as always in the um, so in the portfolio of TRI, we we anodize our abutments pink for more aesthetic. So the pulpa uh, in the real world uh, of our teeth is almost pink as well. And if you do a full ceramic crown on top of this, you have a really nice aesthetical advantage with this pink anodized color. And then, last but not least, the four customizable options. So on the left side here, you see these grooves and this angulated groove. This is actually the patented and the big idea behind this whole system. So you see here four different designs. You would buy at the dental technician would get this design. And in your software, it's uh, um, in the library, you would you can choose when you dis, uh, construct your, your framework, you can choose four different designs actually to put the best fitting design underneath your prosthetic situation. So uh, if I would cut this line, I get this result. If I could cut the angulated line, I get this. And if I combinated the, both uh, um, positions or both cuttings possibilities, it's this design. And this gives you four different uh, designs which you have, uh, which you can choose in your software before you even um, put, um, build or, or, or um, cut this down in reality and bond it to your um, CAD CAM constructed um, uh, ground or uh, bridge work. So this was uh, already um, uh, the part of me uh, to explain you a little bit something of our TRI implant system. And I now I'm very happy to give the word to Luis um, and uh, with the nice topic, the socket shield technique road to success. Luis, I am going to pass you. Please introduce yourself okay. and I'm going to pass you the rights okay. for the screen. Hello, you, Luis. Thank you, Olga. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Hi, Olga. Uh, let me set. Okay. Okay. I guess everything is on place. Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Nice yes, and clear. Okay. Everything looks nice. Luis. Okay. Uh, hello once again, I'm Dr. Luis Bessa from Oporto, Portugal. Third webinar online with Tree Dental Implants Company. Uh, it's been a long journey since two years ago in our partnership and some nice courses, some nice product developments. And today we are here to talk about a little bit about the socket shield technique and how the socket shield technique is improving and changing paradigms in implantology. I'm from Oporto. I'm I'm a dental I'm licensed. I'm a dental doctor and oral and maxillofacial specialist. So let me introduce a little bit my practice. I practice in Oporto, downtown, beautiful city. You are all invited to visit us. We have a lot of surgical trainees, cadaver labs, and we host, sometimes we host international speakers for some courses. And in partnership with Tree Dental Implants, we have some international courses and programs at our education center that you are all invited to come. So, uh, sorry. Uh, 
Partial extraction therapies, uh, it's getting uh, a big phenomenon, more and more increasing and putting more people together. This last year was the first international PET meeting in Madrid that I was honored to be present among this, this huge group of the doctors from all around the world and to discuss what this technique is able to do for us. Traveling around the world and seeing some PET friends every time Olga cast did show you the um, the new the new parts of three dental implants and uh, this tribase is really a nice revolution that you can customize it it uh, the abutment on your software and they they are improving his digital portfolio you can use uh, the impression post at the abutment level or at the implant level and you have old tri bases for all the family of the implants engaging and no non-engaging to allow you to do good zirconia bonded restorations on this kind of abutments. So let's go straight to the technique socket shield and road to success. Uh, dental dental loss is a problem. And we are all lead, we are all leading every day with this kind of cases in our in our office. Once you we lost our teeth and our periodontal ligament complex, we know that the bundle bone of our patients is gone in more time or less time, in more quantity or less quantity. It, it, that it depends on the periodontal type of our patients, but we know that we always will have some collapse on vocal part, okay? So even if we can, if we are able to make some augmentations, tissue augmentation, bone augmentation of our cases, the patients are experienced two, three surgeries to, to allow us to get a good result and to have, uh, to achieve again, a good buccal volume of our our patients the, in the place that he missed the teeth and to achieve this we need two three surgeries and once we have the opportunity to maintain to to maintain the root of our patient of part of the root of our patient we are able to maintain all the buccal volume of uh, of the patients with only one surgery this picture is the picture that uh, uh, the first picture that I take I took to a patient that come in, comes inside my office, and when I look at this picture, I always think about this: it's better and easy to maintain the nature than to recreate the nature. So if we have this kind of emergence profiles, we should try to maintain this kind of emergence profiles. And at the end, with only one surgery and one provisional restoration, the result will be like this, like Mother Nature did it. The vocal volume is completely maintained, the, the keratinized tissue is completely maintained, and this is due to the presence of the vocal part of the root in this alveolus, and the implant is completely behind of that root. What we all want, want uh, implant surgeons, is to give this kind of emergence profiles back to our to our prostodontics. So these kind of emergence profiles will uh, will allow us and our prostodontics to make like restorations like this with completely integration in the soft tissues and have right x-rays like this with minimal marginal bone loss so the step by step of this technique you can see now uh, graphic animations this uh, images was given to me to my form uh, for my friend borja diaz and this explained really well really graphic really well really cool graphic explanation of the technique uh, this technique we should uh, left the buccal part of the root to maintain the periodontal ligament uh, and to maintain the irrigation to our bundle bone and the implant is going on behind of the 
of the root. Okay, here you can see some animations, some pretty animations of the technique. The implant goes behind of the root, then you put your crown, and uh, in the next minutes we'll talk about the crown designs and provisional designs, what they have to be different in some aspects to allow the soft tissue to grow inside here and don't have external or internal shield exposures. So we got to look at the things in a different way and we got to change the, the way we think in plantology once we start performance partial extraction therapy techniques. New tools are being developed to help us okay in immediate implant placements uh osteodesification bars they are helping us so much because we can we can achieve a primary stability in less and less bone with this kind of burst and uh, unless we in in really in really um, short residual bone we can achieve a high high stability of our implants therefore we are able to do a customized healing abutment or a provisional restoration at the same time of the surgery. And this will help, help us to maintain the, emergen the profile emergence of our, our treatment place. So what is the problem of dental loss? The problem of dental loss is that we are losing this complex, losing these fibers, losing the irrigation of the bundle bone. Therefore, we have some collapse of the bundle bone and we know from the literature that the collapse of the bundle bone is not new uh, here in this study there uh, it's true that we have a larger implant than the alveolus that may may ca could cause could have caused a destruction of the bundle bone but the biology it's it's uh, it's sovereign and the bundle bone will disappear every time you took out your tooth and your periodontal alignment. We know that the, the alveolus healing of uh, dogs, we know from this study from our vision link 2005, the bundle bone of the dogs is disappearing on that study. You can see on the left side of the screen, one week, at one week, uh, this image, this image at one month, and this image at two months, and you can see the level of, of the level of the buccal bone. It's always it's it's always less and less. Okay, and if in the dogs we have this kind of resorption, it looks like that in humans the resorption it will it's bigger than in the dogs. So where and what are the the alterations that we have in alveolus post ex exodontia? Box exodontia in the first year we have the first big alterations we know that from 2003 and after 12 months 50 percent of the the width of the crest was lost so two thirds two thirds of this um, this loss will in, will happen in the first three months but uh, the the loss still will still uh, happen in the in the next month is okay we know from this study this um, cbct study from chapuis in from the group of danny buzzer sorry they have studied the right alterations in pause extraction sites in the aesthetic zone they have uh, a sample of 18 women and 21 men with ages uh, between 21 and 69 years, and they performed two CBCTs in each patient. Uh, first CBCT were at the day of the extraction, and second CBCT at eight weeks. They measure the bone loss uh, into in the vertical and horizontal bone loss in three sides of the alveolus in the middle and at uh, the mesial aspect of the alveolo mesial buccal aspect of the alveolo and the distal aspect of the alveolus and what they found was that the alveolus have the major loss on the on his mesial aspect this is due 
to the bony peaks of the adjacent, adjacent is, is maintaining and supporting the the bone in the, in the in the other anatomic anatomic places and what they found too and they considered uh, a, a thin boca wall or a thick boca wall and what they found is that most of we have a, a thin vocal, vocal wall less than one millimeter in the aesthetic zone. So therefore, most of us will 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 experience if we lost a, to a tooth in aesthetic zone, maxillary aesthetic zone, we'll experience something like this. Our tomography at the day zero will be like this, and at eight weeks we can see we can we can't see now the 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 buccal bone this is due to the the period the periodontal type of our patient in the thick type you can see at eight weeks you can see some images here some image but at, in the thin periodontal type you can see nothing so in this kind of cases it is really really hard to perform an immediate implant and to get a stable result all over the ears. So, with this in mind, with this in mind, uh, people people start to do alveolar preservation, alveolar preservation, to trying to stop this process. Okay, if we do alveolar preservation, we have less resorption, but we still have some resorption on the the buccal bone. So let's uh, make a quick literature review of the of the pet literature to show you how it is going the mood on the publications on pet. Now we have. Uh, clinical controlled series, court studies, prospective series, court studies uh, with two series with five years. We have animal studies, we have uh, prospective studies, retro retrospective studies, we have two human histologies, and now we have a random control trial which compares classic immediate implant placement on the aesthetic maxilla and socket shield technique and ev evaluates the marginal bone loss and the pink aesthetic score of the cases. So let's go forward and show some lighter tools. Submergence of the roots is not a, a new topic since the 18th. I guess this is not the, the, the first relate, but since the 18th that it been, has been used to to save the alveolar bone and to have better shapes in the crest of a dentalose patient to provide us a better, a better um, removable prosthesis with better retention. So what is the story behind the technique? Uh, Dr. Maurice Salama introduced the, ro the root submergence technique, which uh, at that time, 2007, was shown as a really cool advantage to have aesthetic results in sites of pontics due to promote the maintenance of vocal volume. Here you can see the article and you can see the beautiful pics of these cases. In 2010, Urzeller came with this proof of principle uh, of socket shield technique. This is a proof of principle, it was an animal study, and they are they were studying in beagles. They have left the the buccal part of the roots, then they put the implants uh, behind the roots, and then they after four four months they have they have made the histologic evaluation of the of the specimens. What they found, they found that the bundle bone was really preserved. They found new cemento and they found bone in contact with the threads of the, the implants. So therefore they conclude that the, the, the intentional rotation of the, the buccal part of the root uh, will not interfere with the integration of the implant and will maintain the buccal 
the vocal volume of our patients, maintaining the periodontal leg ligament and the irrigation of the bundle bone. The studies has going further and they do in animal to the group of Ursler and the, the group of Daniel Baumer with Ursler, Ursler to the first histologic, clinical and volumetric observations. And once again, they see they left the the vocal part of the root as you can see here you see new bone here behind between the root and the implant surface and you see that at this time the root is is higher than the bundle bone okay we're going to discuss this in a few minutes what high uh, literature are is telling us to left our roots uh, in relation with the bone so this is another animal study. I'm going a little bit fast now. Uh, in this study, they have proved too that socket shield could be, could be applied on the a tooth with a vertical fracture. They opened the fracture to allow the coagulum to go inside of the defect on the tooth, on the teeth, and not only the bacteria. That will be a problem, as you can see here. And the case is as a really, really nice outcome. So my good friend from Spain, George Campos, then have done a study on beagles too, hay dogs, and they, 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 he's experienced to put the shield, the implant in contact with the shield, or avoiding the contact in the shield and studying what is between what is happening between the in this space in this gap space different results in different specimens with different positions of the implants and the most curious is that like in this case you can see the bundle bone is the bone is growing up in the shield it's the periodontal ligaments remains normal with no signs of inflammation the root with no signs of resorption and the bone is getting it's, it's, it's growing the bone grows above the shield in this kind of in this in this particular case okay so in the in the other in the other case they found shield ankylosis and replacement uh, by bone and we are asking us if this is the the best scenario the the contact of the implant with the shield could promote a uh, occlusion and the seal for for the soft tissue but it's not it's, it's not clear it's not so clear here what we should do i guess nowadays we are trying to put our implants as close as the shield as possible but not in contact with the shield so then the group from the greeks mitzias and Constantinos Yorkmas came out with a step-by-step -step, uh, article um, of this technique, giving us indications uh, how to perform the technique. Then the technique is getting more specific and specific, like Joseph can come, uh, Joseph can come with this alteration, uh, which is could be useful to put adjacent implants. He is left in the medial part of the um, the the root to to preserve the papilla and then we have these two uh, big big series one from daniel bomber group and one from the greeks group they are the major big series in the in the literature five years results and now we are waiting for these 10 years results of this series the conclusions of the greeks are more enthusiastic, the intentional root, orientation of the buccal aspect of the root with this periodontal appearance during immediate implant placement can lead to predictable and sustainable also integration of implants. And the conclusions of the other groups that are more moderate and tell us that this technique should not be used in routine clinical practice until a higher level of evidence in the form of prospective clinical trials is available. More literature, 
uh, the group from Dr. Our, our Glukman from South Africa, Jonathan and Maurice Salama came up with the Pontic shield. It's an alteration that they left the shield like the socket shield, but when they are not able to put the implant at the same time, they do like a alveolar preservation in behind the root. And then if he wants to come later and put the implant, they are able to do that, or they are able to, to maintain that as a site, uh, pontic site development. The same group comes out with the pet therapies part one, which give us the indications for each technique of the partial extraction therapies, like root submergence technique, socket shield technique, pontic shield technique, and proximal shock socket shield. And then they come out with the second part of uh, the study, which is giving us notes from the procedures and the technical aspects to lead with this kind of situations. Then uh, an happy and happy systematic review was published on Journal of Oral Implantology. I guess uh, everybody knows that this is a study with full of bias. Therefore, uh, the group from Aubrey Glukman and Jonathan Dutois write a letter to the editor uh, explaining his point of view about this article. Then the same group came out with this retrospective this evaluation of 128 socket shields and giving us much more information about how we should prepare our, sh our shield to getting it into the bone level and beveling the shield to allow more space for our prosthetic component and for the soft tissue in grow to protect our shield. And therefore now going forward, we have the human histology. Uh, this article from my good friend Charles from United States, Dr. Glukman too, and Maurice Salem and Jonathan. And this case was uh, an accidental and planted uh, socket shield. And the case goes to the office and was like this with a big pocket. They open a flap. The implant was completely, completely lost. And they took the implant out and make a histology study who is showing here that between the shield and the implant surface, there is a new bone formation with arvarian, arvarian ar uh, with arvars systems. And then you, you, you can see here in higher magnification that there is bone, new bone formation. Another human histology with a little bit different result. Uh, it's giving us from the group of uh, Mitsias. They have the chance to to make a human histology for uh, in the five years implant uh, in function made with the resource of socket shield technique. What they found, they found they found bone uh, between the shield and the implant. The Periodontal ligament is completely healthy. You see bone on the apical third, on the medium third, and in the coronal third, they found non-infiltrate connective tissue. Okay, that's what you can see here on this image with higher magnification. This is the medium third, and is left in here an image of the apical third, who shows you really new bone formation between the shield and the implant. And now the last study that has came out from a good friend who is writing here. This group is from Italo, Ennio Barmati, first author of this article. They have made a random control trial study comparing 
classic immediate implant, implant placement on the anterior maxilla and socket shield placement on the anterior maxilla. They have a sample of 14, uh, 14 implants placed and what they test they in they evaluate they evaluate the marginal bone loss in the two groups at three different times at the implant but uh, at three months from implant placement at six months from implant placement and there at three years follow up from implant placement they evaluate the pink aesthetic score and they evaluate the marginal bone loss in the two different groups. Socket shield, uh, respecting the pink aesthetic score, has better results at the T1 time interval, at T2 time interval, and at T3 time interval, and have better results of bo marginal bone loss at uh, the three months, six months, and three years control follow up. So, regarding the literature, this kind of technique and this kind of proce procedure, it's getting uh, stronger and stronger every day due to the high effort of uh, some groups that are they are studying day by day and making research about these techniques and coming up with these valuable information to guide us in our clinical practice. So, the socket shield road to success. Uh, socket shield, we should apply it on sockets type 1 which uh, I guess if we can go flapless on the aesthetic zone, we'll have better results. We, should, uh, we will have better results. Uh, the implant selection should be carefully to have space because now we are leading with more one element that is the root. We have the bone, we have the root, and we should managing all these things to have space for soft tissue in growth and to protect, to uh, protecting our internal part of the shield and achieving a good emergence profile. Therefore, optimal 3D position of the implant and prosthetic socket seal are important topics on this kind of treatment. A simplified socket classification and repair technique uh, from Alien, we perform the socket shield technique on sockets type one of this classification in sockets uh, of this type okay we have all the um, we have all the the buccal bone the buccal bone in place and we have no no displacement of the soft tissues too another great article coming from the um, group of Howie Gluckman and Jonathan Dutois from South Africa. They write this new article that it's like an update of the article that we know from Khan that is giving us the position, the radial position of the tooth uh, regarding the, the anatomic the crest. But this article is giving not just uh, the classification, a class, it's not just a classification of the position of the radial tooth, but it's giving us um, some procedure inputs for our for each type of um, position of the root according to the crest. Okay, so the flapless approach we know from the studies from Welly Grunder, from Tarno Shu, and Salama that when we open a flap we always have some bone loss so if we are if we are living in the aesthetic zone each millimeter is so important that we don't want to refract the flap uh, and uh, and be able to lose this kind of a uh, beautiful anatomy that mother nature has created in our patients so Maintaining, as I said before, it's always better than recreating. 
So if uh, we can go for a flapless procedure in this kind of cases, we go for a flapless procedure, we go for a traumatic extraction. You see now from a traumatic cut, cutting of the roots and preparing of the roots without touching our gingival margins to be able to maintain everything. We put our implants on place and we know that if we sorry we put our implants on place on the palatal position so the implant selection how we do the implant selection from for each alveolus i'm i'm i'll be doing this guy uh, using this article as a as a guide for this uh, this article is from José Carlos Martins da Rosa from Brazil. He developed his, this article to select the implants size for his technique, the immediate and alveolar technique. But I'm transferring and I'm using it in socket shield procedures and it helps me a lot. So we select the implant by measuring the vocal palatal dimension of our gap. And if the gap is less than seven millimeters, we use narrow implants. If it's the same or more, we can use we can use um, a regular implant. And if it's more than nine, we can use a wide implant. But I never go for a wide implant on the aesthetic zone. If we select the um, the get the implant with these rules of this article and with this protocol we are always able to achieve a three millimeters gap which for me it's more or less the ideal because we could will have a good emergence profile of our restoration without have the without touching the the, the root because this could be a serious problem we, we can have uh, complications when we are leading with the prosthetic part of this technique if the, we have not enough room from the for the for the for the emergence profile of our restorations so the implant 3d position should be as palatal and as deeper that allows us to construct a good a good restoration for our for our patients therefore the the, the if we have our implant too deep we're gonna have different emergence profiles and different kind of soft tissue in growth in each in each um, in each kind of procedures so we should measure our gap after we put the implants and after we put our implants we should go for the prosthetic restorations i'm sorry some some problems with with the presentation okay and does the size the size of the gap matters okay yes the size of the gap matters matters for the the emergence profile and matters to have some room and some space for our prosthetic restoration now you can see here you can see some graphic explanations. If we have one millimeter gap, what we're going to have is a straight restoration to avoid the contact with this root. If we have a restoration with an emergence profile like this, coming from this part, we're going to touch the root and we can displace it, or we're going to have just a little space for soft a little room from for soft tissue therefore we are going to lead with the most common uh, complication which is internal exposure which is a minor complication and then easy to be solved with the reshape and retrime of the
of the root, okay? If we have more space like this, three millimeters away from the, the root, we can have different emergence profile, more concave emergence profile here, without touching the, the root and lifting much more space for tough soft tissue in grow and protecting and protect our our roots so the prosthetic seal is really important for me to maintain the it's really important to maintain all the architecture of our alveolus or to maintain the gingival contour to have a natural transition at the, the end of the treatment between our prothesis and pink soft tissues and to have vocal soft tissue volume adequate to our restoration. So, therefore, customized profiles at the time of the surgery are always better than standard profiles. We know that from the studies from dual zone concept that the best results are, are obtained when we have, uh, when we graft the dual zone and we use a provisional, a provisional restoration or a customized healing abutment. So let's see some cases here. If we don't have the chance to, if we don't have the chance to to have enough stability of our implant, we should go for a thing like this, a customized healing abutment. And nowadays it's super easy to do it with the VPI Innovator tools. And then go for a Maryland bridge bonded like this. And at four months with one surgery, we are able to have this kind of gentival architecture it's all everything it's unplaced, papillas are unplaced, the vocal volume, the color of the tissue. And then we just need to make an impression. In this case, we ask our lab for a second provisional. And then after the second provisional, we are able to have some integration of our restoration like this and the final restoration in one tie base, uh, zirconia restoration bonding in one tie base with the under gingival part always super polished zirconium and above with ceramics. Okay, I'm gonna jump now, I'm gonna showing just, uh, okay, it's, it's okay. Uh, now, therefore, I'm going to jump to the last case because the time is, is running. Uh, so this is the kind of final restoration that we want to improve. If we have, if we have, if we have enough enough stability of our implants, we can go for uh, immediate uh, provisional restoration. I would love to use this peak. Uh, abutments from TRI. They are really easy to bond our provisional restorations in there. And after this, after four months, this, we are able to, to copy the emergence profile of our provisional and to order the final restoration and to have an emergence profile like this uh, with only one surgery. It's really a cool technique. There is no, no biomaterial. There is nothing. There is only biology working for us and giving us this kind of x-rays and this kind of results and integrations of our restorations. Therefore, the critical contour and subcritical contour of our restorations should be respect. And we can use, if we have chance, we can use the, the veneers of the, our patients to do the provisionals. We can condition it our veneers. We can bond the veneers to this kind of a big abutments. And we can get out of our surgery with this kind of results. So now I'm showing 
the last case I'm showing a guided case performed in one central this case it's one of my older case in the aesthetic zone so I did a, a partial extraction technique I perform a socket shield technique with guided implant placement from TRI implants and I did immediate screw restoration and then a copy of this immediate screw restoration. This is the initial situation of our patients. It's leading to a fracture here. You can see some inflammation here and some bone loss here on this bony peak that it will be present at the end. At this time, there was no article from our Gluckman and Jonathan. Therefore, we are classifying the position of our, the radial position of our teeth in, a, in, in relation to the crest with this article from Joseph Kahn. We plan all the surgery. We superimpose a CBCT and the STL model. We plan to put a vent implant, 13 millimeter, 4.1 for 13 millimeters implant. Therefore, we have made the, the coronation, the preparation of the crown, the, the root, the extraction of the palatal part of the root, maintaining the buccal one to maintain our our bundle bone and our periodontal ligament which is giving a blood supply to the buccal bone then we select our implant according to this article that i showed before we measure how deep uh, the root is from the the gingival margin and we use the tri guided system which is really cool system simple system with just one bore and with a good sleeve that is giving us a, a really cool precision we put our implant close to the shield but not in contact to the shield and we capture we use the peak the peak abutment and we use the patient veneer to do the the provisional restoration there is no better provisional restoration than the the whole veneer of the tooth of the patient well every time i i'm able to save it i save it to do my provisional restoration the provisional rest restoration should respect all the spaces not to move the shield and in order not to move our tissue away and this is the relationship of the implant placement the shield a little i left this case a little bit above of the bone this is an older case maybe today i will reduce it a little bit and get a little more space with the bevel that how we as described it and jonathan and you can see the implant is a little bit deeper and then i have uh, experience some some internal shield exposure i have to cut my my provisional restoration and at the time of the second impression i have this kind of result you see here i have a little bit of loss of the bony peak due to the initial situation so my lab sent me this beautiful restoration from this patient zirconium crown above a tie base but I, I don't like to have ceramic here therefore you can see that i will trim this part of ceramic and left zirconium polish it in the infragingival part of my restoration this is the kind of emergence profile that we are able to get with all the vocal volume maintained and this is the final of the case with real cool integration of uh, our restorations with the keratinized gingiva maintained in our patient in our patient with the matching of color texture and volume of our restorations really cool integration and a really happy patient with this treatment hold patient one surgery and this result so uh, finish my presentation here we have five minutes left if we have some questions Olga if you want to manage it uh, yeah first of all I would love to say okay. uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation um, of the um, mainly of the uh, lecture and everything to to get an overview and uh, 
Um, yeah, yes. a little bit. Uh, that there was a. Uh, I think a you read a lot of books. I have to take um, my time explaining the literature of the technique because this is a um, new technique and we have yeah. to support it with the literature. Now we have five years data, we have human histologies, we have random controller tri one random controller trial, trial, which is giving us more confidence and power to apply these techniques every day in our office. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I just see there's popping in a lot of questions, uh, which uh, was clear for this topic. Okay. Um, so let me start to um, moderate those um, uh, questions. So the first question was yes. from Raphael Taishaya. I hope I can spell it well. And uh, the size of the particles for the gap makes a difference. So I think the, the yeah. The okay. size of the uh, if we should, if we the size of the particles, if we do graft in the gap, we should use a material that uh, has fast turnover. Therefore, uh, channel graft on the gap of this kind of technique is not uh, a good idea. I guess like beta tricalcium phosphato or something like that, some synthetic material with. Uh, faster turnover should be put on the gap and uh, maybe with short particles to have a good adaptation and don't left empty spaces okay um next question is from our both friends Kaudar from uh, tunisia um uh, oh, professor hello. Sweet, um, um she asked um what is the the minimal thickness of the shield. Um, so um, how, well, how thick must be the shield? The minimal, you don't minimal. The minimal thickness of the shield. You should have a shield uh, like with two millimeters of, of thickness, but you can trim a lot because you can experience shield um, movements, okay? So I guess uh, if we have two, two millimeters of the, the shield thickness in the cardinal part, it is cool. Okay. Uh, actually, Aditya Sanapala, that was the same question I see just now. And Kauda had another question. Kauda had another question. Does it mm -hmm. matter if we graft the gap uh, or no in case of PET? Of? PET. Of PIT. Of, uh, I didn't understand the question. If, if, um, if it matters, if we don't gra if we graph if the gap we graph or don't graph the gap, the gap or, no, or, or no in case or not in case of uh, yes in the PIT. IT. What's PIT? P P P A T. Ah, P E T. Partial extraction yeah, therapy. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I guess for the survival of the implant. Um, for the survival of the implants is not a matter, okay? But uh, I guess the trend nowadays is to put something in the gap that has a really fast turnover, uh, but put something in the gap. Okay, I think that okay. answers the question. Okay. And then as a question of um, can you please el elaborate uh, more on the socket shield technique uh, what? Can you please uh... Uh, on socket shield technique okay the socket shield technique is a technique that was described uh, as lifting the vocal part of the shield uh, in the socket to maintaining the periodontal ligament and the blood supply for, for the bundle bone. Uh, this is the main objective of this technique and was firstly described to use to be used on the anterior, ma anterior maxilla zone, aesthetic zone, which is the zone that we have the thin buccal, buccal bone. Uh, the technique has evolution has evolved and it's been using nowadays even in on molar sites. Okay. So this okay. is the, the main objective of this technique. Okay, and then there's a question, what should be the minimum height of the shield? Not the thickness, this ah. time the height. Okay, the minimum lecture? height of the shield. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, specific, the minimum height, but we should have the minimum height to have a stable 
uh, shield. Okay, the, if the shield uh, got uh, some kind of movement during the surgery, please take out the shield. You are avoiding complications of your practice. Then there's another question from Suraya Ahmad. Um, if the socket shield is mo mobile, can we still use it? No, no. take it out. Okay. Clear answer. Uh, and then uh, there's another question, Nikia Chandra Mohan. Can we use this technique in infected sockets? I'm guessing that's a no. Can well. we use this technique on infected sockets? That's a really, really nice question. Yes, we can use this technique on infected sockets. We can associate uh, if we are able to clean all the socket. Okay, this technique could be associate with the let me show a picture it's maybe better uh with ap apicoectomies okay at the same time that allows us to take the apex of the tooth where is the where is the um, let me show you here ah uh, you can't uh sorry uh i i switched ah, yes, 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 yes. i got yes open i think resin. I... Um, you Let want me to switch again? Just show, so, so one piece, just one picture. Let me just show one picture. Let me see if it's here. Uh, okay, now, please no, go ahead. No, no, no. There's uh, maybe one last question before we. Uh, okay. uh, the stereo tom okay. is used always. That's a question you maybe can answer. What? Record. What? What? The per periotomy. The periotomy is used always. Uh, okay, the periotum. I use the periotum to only in the um, in the palatal part of the shield. Okay, that I will okay. take out, not in the in the other part of the 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 root. Okay, then go ahead. I with was the other question. Image, but yes, you can change it again if you want. Okay. And do me uh -huh. the, the kind of. You have the, the right question. now. You're on now. You're online now. You want me to switch okay. back? No, no, it's okay. Tell me the other questions, Olga. Um, I think we stop here now because uh, we are out of time already. And um, mm -hmm. with the question and answering, because I will take the chance uh, to quickly um, give um, you the information about uh, um, our new global uh, education program. Oh, sorry. That's um, mm -hmm. um, now my... Um, the new global training education or program, which is now online. You can see this on our website and we have a really great uh, program for 2018 with uh, a lot of great uh, courses all around the world. Actually, also with you, Luis, in, uh, in Porto, in your beautiful Iron Education Center about the topic um, all on TRI um, and um, many other things with um, with speakers from all around the world and I would love to give you the information and that you save the date for the next webinar don't miss it uh, it is going to take place on the 28th of March uh, with Dr. Alexandro Ionesco who is um, really um, um, using the tissue level implant as nobody else, I would say. And we have a great topic and you're going to hear more about his topic uh, uh, soon. So keep uh, updated on our website or also be just a, a one click uh, and you are a member of uh, an, a follower of uh, our Facebook site where we announce always every day the newest uh, things what's going to happen uh, in the TRI uh, family. So um, um, the questions we did not answer right now, we're going to um, uh, pass to Dr. Luis Besser and uh, we will make sure that everybody of you gets the answer um, and um, in the in the in the uh, after this webinar and i would like to thank you all for listening to this uh, really great uh, topic and um, please stay tuned and um, if there's anything we can do for you um, just uh, write us under academy at tri minus implants dot swiss so thank you very much uh, luis and see you next time thank you all for your kind attention thank you all for this kind of invitation looking forward to the next webinar bye bye 28 bye, thank you bye okay thank you bye bye